Have you ever ruined an edit and wish that you could go back and erase the mistakes? Let's just say I did something here. I'll make a duplicate of this background. And I have a bit of a tan color in here. I just want to make the background more tan by painting over the stuff that's not tan. Pretty standard kind of a trick to do in here. It's a bit of basic background photo editing. But I get up here and to get that green out, I'm hitting into the hair. Now I can't just do the undo button because I've been doing a lot of little short strokes. That would take me forever. If I could just erase a little bit of this work, that would be phenomenal. But I'm not doing it on a layer mask, anything like that. So what do you do? Well, Affinity Photo has a magic tool for this. And it's over here and it's the undo brush tool. And with this, I can just come in here and paint away just the parts I wanna paint away. Notice that this is all done out of sequence. I'm not backing up on the painting steps. I'm only taking out the painting that I wanted to get rid of. Almost as if I had this on its own separate layer of layer masks and everything else. But I can do it just like that. Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to use this great little known tool. It's one of those tools that most people don't know about or they're not really sure exactly how to use it. This is just one example. There's a lot more that you can do. First off, again, it's over here, and it's called the Undo Brush Tool. Now, to use this tool properly, it's best if you worked with snapshots. You can do it with the history, but it's better with snapshots. And here's a snapshot tab right down here. Whenever you open up a new file, you automatically have a background snapshot. That's your original picture. That's what I'm working with right here. But you can come in and do additional snapshots. With the snapshot panel, just click on the plus sign right there. Give it a name. Let's call this one one half color because that's all I've done so far. I've colored one half of my background in here. And I now have these two different snapshots. Now for this to work, Click on the layer you want to work on. Choose a button right here that sets the undo brush source. Let's go here to the background. Let's reset this to background. So it's just the background layer now. I just even lost that painting layer up here. I'll come down to the one half colored layer right here. Let's go onto this background layer. I'm going to untoggle that so it's not locked. And now I can come in and just brush back in that effect that I did. I'm not repainting it. Notice I keep on going over this, nothing happens. All I am doing is I'm bringing back in that adjustment that I had. So a really interesting tool. Now, it's very useful for things like this when you want to come in and just repair something where you've made some mistakes and you're doing a fancier painting style effect in here. But you can also do some very tricky things with this. Let me just show you something. Let's close this down. I'm not going to bother saving that one. That's just my opening demo here. Let's bring up another file. And this is black and white right here. Let's say I want to do this as a two-tone image. Now, I've done this picture before a long time ago using real fancy custom-made gradients and stuff. Very tricky to do. And with doing careful layer masks and things, it took a long time. It's about a 25-minute video. But we can do this real fast here by using the snapshots and the undo brush. Now, if you don't see your snapshots down here, it's easy to find. Go up to Window, and it's right there. Just check on that, and it'll show up right down over here. This is our beginning picture. There's our background. That's our first snapshot. Let's now colorize this image. I'll go over here. We'll bring our adjustments up. And let's choose our color balance right there. And I'll start off with the midtones. I want to make my flesh tone more of a flesh tone. So we're just going to come in here and add in some color to this and give us a bit more of a flesh tony kind of a color. That's looking pretty good. That's the mid-range. Let's do our shadows. Same thing. We'll add more color into the shadows. Kind of like that, maybe not too much. There we go. And let's check our highlights. And you know, bring in some more color into the highlights as well. And just balance that color out. There we go. It's getting kind of a nice sepia tone look to this. So let's now take a snapshot at this point. Now let's do snapshot right there. And let's give this a name. I'll call this one sepia tone. And choose OK. Let's now get rid of this color balance adjustment right here. I'm just going to... Trash this will start all over again. Let's come down, come back and do a new color balance. It's just easier this way than resetting all those adjustments. Just start over again. This time I want to be doing the background and I want to go more towards the cyans and the blues. This time I'll do a lot of cyan and a little bit of blue. Kind of like that. That's our midtones. Let's do our shadows. A lot of cyan and a little bit of blue to balance that out. And let's do our highlights. There we go. Again, a lot of cyan in here and a little bit of blue to balance the colors out. Anything right about there is good. I'm looking over here. I'm not looking at her face. I'm just looking at the background. Let's do this one as our next snapshot. Click on the snapshot button right here. And I'll just call this one cyan because we're basically looking at a cyan color in there. Okay, I now have these two colors. 
Let's go back here to the background snapshot. I'll click on this button. That resets everything back to the background snapshot. It gets rid of that adjustment layer. Let's now bring back in our coloration. And we can do that easily by going to the coloration. I'll go to the cyan here. If I click on this check mark, it then resets that cyan position. And I noticed that it brought back in that adjustment as well. So we're back to our cyan. Let's say now I wanted to bring back in my sepia tone for the girl's face in here, face and hair. I go to the sepia tone layer. And this time, click on that button right there, just to the left of where it says sepia tone. Let's come back to our background layer right here. So we're working on the background layer. We have our sepia tone. And now let's go over here to the undo brush. And you can see right there in the brush that we're now seeing that flesh tone in there. So I just kind of roll that over. And if I begin to paint, What's going to happen is it's coming in and painting in that sepia tone look from that one adjustment, from that one history state, and let's continue painting in. It's going kind of weird green over here. That's because we're picking up some of that cyan on that side. So it's giving us a blending of the cyan and the sepia tone in here. So we're getting our sepia tone for our highlights and our midtones. And then as it gets into the shadows, we're getting into a bit of a blending of the two making a very complex adjustment in here. Let's say I want to get less of that cyan down through here. Go back to our color adjustment up here. Let's open this up. Double click on the icon right here. And I can now come back in and actually balance this out a little bit. Let's look at our shadows. And we'll balance out our shadows just a touch. Just bring back on that cyan. There we go. So I'm turning it down on the shadow area and taking out some of that cyan. And it's just a matter of just balancing in your colors between the two. A bit more of the magenta in here on that side. And there you go, a real fast duotone effect. So there's a lot of things you can do with this technique, and it works especially well if what you're doing is requiring a lot of painting style work in here. So it's great for the more artistic kind of effects that you'd be doing. And the things to keep in mind when using this tool first is to make sure you're taking your snapshots. Very important, you have to have that. Also, when you are painting in on your snapshot, make sure that you're onto your image layer and not an adjustment layer. Those will pop up and down as you're going back and forth between your different snapshots. So make sure you're always back on your image layer and make sure in the snapshots that you click on this little box right here. So if I wanted to bring back my black and white, I would click on the background layer. That's the original black and white image right there. It's also a good idea to make sure that you name these things. We name this as we put it in, so make sure you do that. Another fun thing about this, click on one of these snapshots and you can actually save the snapshot out as a new file. Let's go to this button right here, click on that. There's that snapshot. And notice up here, it's in its own file right here. So this is one that we're working on right here. And here's the one that we just saved that snapshot as its own file. Kind of a neat trick. Sometimes that's a useful tool to have in there. That also means if you wanted to, you could take your snapshot, bring it back in here, just drag it in as a new layer, and then use layer masks and whatever, more of your standard approaches. Okay, there you go. That's this really interesting undo brush tool. Again, it's not used that much, but when it's useful, it's an amazing tool. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'm doing a lot of Affinity Photo videos right now, along with my Photoshop Elements videos, mostly on normal standard stuff, but occasionally I'll toss in these interesting little trick videos. And I'll see you next time.